right, we'll call this meeting to order. Uh, if you all would please join me for the pledge. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Kenny, will you lead us in a word of prayer? Uh, dear Lord, thank you for another day. Thank you for being with us, giving us strength and guidance. Be with the sick and the ailing and their loved ones that watch after them. Bless each and every one of us. Amen. Amen. Thank you all. Thank you all for coming tonight. Uh, does everybody feel like you've got enough room? Yeah? Plenty of chairs? Good deal. We'll get right to work then. Susan, will you please call the roll? Yes. Here. Chris Leiter. Here. Kenny Green. Here. J.D. Jones. Here. Kirby Melvin. Here. Crystal Hunter. Here. All right. Thank you very much. I've moved things around a little bit to allow for public comment first. Uh, if anybody would like a copy of the agenda, I'd be happy to put it on the podium. But anyone who would like to weigh in on what we have on the agenda, uh, please stand up to the podium, state your name, and say your piece. All right, we'll move right on to uh, the second reading of the ordinance amending the zoning ordinance. <coughs> Crystal? Is Chelsea here? She's on her way. I, I, can, I can read it. Okay, Mike. That's okay. <coughs> Chelsea's running late to see up in a meeting, so. Um, this is an ordinance amending the uh, prior ordinance numbers uh, 910.01 and 920.01, the Planning and Zoning Ordinance in Trimble County, Kentucky. Whereas the Trimble County Fiscal Court has the authority to amend ordinances by the exercise of its powers, and whereas the Fiscal Court deems it to be uh, in the best interest of the citizens of the county that an amendment of the prior authorized ordinance of Planning and Zoning shall be amended to reflect the current copy reviewed and discussed by the Trimble County Fiscal Court on November 4th, 2019 in accordance with the law. Now therefore be it ordained by the Fiscal Court of Trimble County, Kentucky, pursuant to Kentucky law and the powers vested in the Fiscal Court that the Trimble County Planning and Zoning Ordinance is hereby amended as follows. Article 5, Section 510 and 520 clarifies the non-conforming use provisions. Article 6, Section 650, the addition of bed and breakfast as a conditional use in an A1 district. Article 11, Sections 1120 and 1160, update signage provisions to bring in compliance with new case law. Appendix A, definitions 1, 18, 20, 21, 42, and 44. Article 6, Section 650, 1C7. Article 1, Section 140 corrects a misstatement regarding the county subdivision regulations. Article 2, Section 230 and 250 reorganizes the ex exceptions for which a zoning permit is not required. Article 5, Sections 500, 530 through 580 clarifies and better organizes and defines nonconforming lots, structures, and uses. Article 6, Section 650, strengthens and clarifies the land application of solid and special waste as a conditional use and provide for additional safety for warehouse and rock house structures. Article 6, Section 690, uh, condenses dimensional and area regulations for A1 parcels, which are less than five acres. Article 7, Section 720 through 750, C Section 2C. Article 7, Section 760 and 770, those portions are, are deleted entirely. The look-back date for enforcement throughout the ordinance, uh, uh, we recommend be set herein as, as January the 1st, 2020. The purpose of this ordinance is to protect, maintain, and enhance agricultural farmlands, businesses, public health, safety, and general welfare uh, within Trimble County by amending the planning and zoning ordinance. The ordinance will become effective upon its passage in an advertisement according to the law. Submitted by Michael Files, Chairman of the Planning Commission. All right, we've had the second reading. Um, do we have a motion to accept? 
So moved. Is there a second? Second. Susan, will you call the roll? Are we having any discussion? Would you like to have some, J.D.? I would, because Please do. we still don't know the fees from the lawyer I asked last time. We, we have not been billed this. Uh, We've got a bill today. We've got a bill today. Yep. Can we see it? It is uh, in the office. Okay. Yep. Well, it's like $9,000. $9,000. We would like to see that produced earlier. Uh, I, I believe that they probably should yep. be The only reason it's not on air is because I don't have on the agenda about okay. the bills. I understand. Also, we don't have any processes. I mean, we, we don't know when That's they right. fill out a permit, how that permit goes, the process flow of the permit. Because it does say in there the county clerk is not supposed to issue any, on. on any deeds. So have we sat down with them and figured out how they're going to do that process? And the way they explained it uh, in Henry County is the, the zoning administrator. We'll review that, and then if, if there's not an issue, it doesn't conflict with anything, they'll sign it. If not, then they'll take it in front of the zoning commission. So do, do we got that information yeah. from the zoning we, board? We do not. Okay. I just think there's a lot of stuff to be done before January. I think we have a lot of holes. I do too. And I think the biggest expense of it's going to be is enforcing it. I think hiring somebody uh, to do the management of it. Uh, something of this magnitude needs to be uh, dealt with uh, very seriously. Yeah. Henry County is three times the size of us, or two times the size. They've had 134 permits for this year come in, and that's a little over 13 a month. Right. And when we hired our solid waste coordinator at this table, they were we talked about an executive session. So are we going to discuss okay. what we talked about in the executive session here? I'm okay no, with it if that's no. what you all want. No, we won't. Okay. We won't, but we, I think, I think mm -hmm. here in open court that our solid waste coordinator can do the job. I, I, I think maybe they can if they're there when the person comes up to and do And we got, I mean. Well, I don't have a doubt in her competence. Oh, I know that. But that's, she has a land issue. at the time. But is we low her on her time. price. And. How does she? How is she going to have time? In just in less than three months, she has found over eight landfills in Trimble County. I know that. that. Getting, I know that are getting cleaned up. Uh, but eight, eight of them. So who's going to who's going to clean them up if she's putting her concentration into this? Well, I mean, Henry County does thirteen a month. I doubt we'll do thirteen a month. Oh, and, and they and, turn and they turn. And well, I was over. Uh, but they also the got day. a budget of ninety-eight thousand dollars. No, it's forty. It's not well. Uh, okay, she could have lied to me, but when I called well, and asked well, the, the judge executive over there, well, that's who I talked to. And it was ninety eight thousand dollars. Him or the deputy judge executive, because she looked at the budget. Oh, that's what they budget for. Maybe not what they spend. You know, we budget yeah, different, yeah, and right. that's what the budget was. And in our budget, we put fifteen thousand. We put fifteen thousand. Yeah. And. But I'm Nine thousand is going to get you with I'm, the attorney. I'm fees. not arguing with you guys, but I know that the attorney fees that required will be the main cost. I understand that. I was over there at Henry County. The same Chris and I rode over there, talked to the zoning man that, that gives the permits. Just happened, the gentleman walked in the place. Less than five minutes, he was out the door. Had his permit and everything. Less than five minutes. Yeah, I, I don't think it. that'll be an issue, Kirby, for people so. who are willing to to do this. But out here, with with no zoning in the past, we're going to have people that that do not want to comply. How did you know? We're going to have to have somebody in the field. Mm -hmm. So the zoning permit. How did they know it was conforming, not conforming? How did they do a site evaluation? He got a computer there and got the layout. The they got the same thing as the PBA got when mm -hmm. it pops up. I mean, gives the address. They looked at it, and they, if you're whatever zone restriction you're in, you've done it. The guy filled out the paperwork. He had drawn his little one. how much that software cost. Yeah, because that would need to be installed before we take over. Uh, that, this is what we need. Yeah. I don't doubt that we can't get it. Well, we should already have it. Yeah. I keep, I'll bother you. We've been working on this for four years, for four years. we got a lot of homes. <coughs> It's hard to fill in the holes until you get to where you need to be. It, you know, at one time there was a doubt whether this was going to pass or not. And so, yeah, there is work to be done. Yeah, yeah I agree with you. There is. But I'm sure we can do it. I'm confident in the people we are to do it. Do we have we any have discussion we've got? 
just know I have concerns on the. And I and I talked to Mike Piles about this, about the overlay in Milton. That's one of my main concerns. What's going to happen? And, and and to inform the court, the city of Milton does not want to be in with this zoning at this time. That's exactly what you were there. Yeah, that's what time. they said. And I think that if we're going to do something for the whole county, uh, <coughs> that should take into consideration uh, is that we have one of our towns does not want to join it. You've got to start somewhere. It's Carrollton. has plenty of zoning, but Carroll County does but not. Carroll County does not. So they started somewhere. And I doubt they ever will. If people hadn't lied, it wouldn't be on the table. All right. Uh, Susan, you call the roll to the vote. <clears throat> District 1, Chris Leiter. Yes. District 2, Kenny Green. Yes. District 3, J.D. Jones. No. District 4, Kirby Melvin. Yes. Judge Executive Todd Pollock. No. All right. Uh, now we'll move on to emergency management services. Andrew, you want to come up and talk about your the grant and this truck? Uh, so, luckily, um, thankfully, they uh, had approved our grant for the truck for the last year. Um, there was 55 projects total in the whole state. Uh, which I think totaled the 300, and, don't hold that number, but I think it's $380,000, which was all of Kentucky. Um, so we're pretty fortunate that they were able to give us 26000 of it. Um, so that's what I'm here basically to ask again or to confirm that you all still want to do this 50 50 grant. It's a reimbursement grant, so we'll have to spend the money up front and then they'll reimburse us. Up to half, which is like twenty six thousand seven hundred and ninety seven dollars. Where did your truck look to you purchase that? Uh, Earl, in trouble. What's the turnaround for reimbursement? Uh, within a month. Let me ask you, Andrew, how many natural emergencies do we have in the county? Uh, every, what do you mean, every year or ever? Like, whether it's a flood, tornado, ice. Is that, that, is that our big three emergencies? Uh, it, well, our big three is actually um, flooding and severe weather being number one. Number two is a chemical leak. And then number three is actually an airplane crash. That's our three top disasters that could happen. How frequent do we have airplane crashes? <sighs> never. Well, I don't want to say never. We've had small engine crashes. We've never had a big one. However, since we're directly in the flight path of both Louisville and CBG, that's our number three, according to the risk management plan. And usually in the spring, we have some severe weather with winds all, and yeah, all those tornadoes. But just like Houston, they had tornadoes uh, yesterday. What about fire? Wouldn't that be in large, large fires, it, it counts. Um, my, my job doesn't really deal with residential fire as much as it would do with like large scale wildland stuff like that. I do deal with residential but it's not really you know my job my job covers large scale stuff so um, like this year coming up we're getting ready to do a large scale exercise with LGME where they have uh, 250,000 gallons of anhydrous. So that actually affects seven counties if one of those tanks was a, not just ours. So and if there was a, an active shooter at one of the schools, mm -hmm. you'd be involved in that also. Yep. yep. So what do you do there? Uh, mainly, I would be uh, media liaison, um, with, along with Charlie or whatever he's doing, um, as well as there's actually a lot of reporting that has to do behind the scenes to the state. I go with that. This, uh, I know, 50 50 grant. Can we make payments on our side? What, I mean, we got to pay it all up front off the start, right? Well, yeah, and, and it'll be it'll be split up because, like, for instance, the truck, you know, we're not going to get the truck unless they just have it on the lot until probably February, and then it'll take a little bit once we get that, then to go to the next place and get it taken care of. You know, this will be a uh, 
probably a three month process. You know, to get the truck, get it, take it, get it later, take it, get the top and stuff and stuff, take it, get the so. so our end would be about twenty six thousand two hundred seventeen dollars, mm -hmm. somewhere yeah. around in there. And this is the funding this comes from is a federally allocated fund that funds every county. Each county gets the amount based on the population of the yeah. county. So, yeah, and then this is the this is the leftover yep. amount. Is what this is. I like to want to do this. I like to make the payments. Instead of bringing it all out of coffers at one time. Is that possible on a fifty-fifty grant? We, we, we'd have to borrow the money because we have to pay it all up front. Yeah. I don't see the cost, 26000 some dollars, even if you got a 50-50 grant, and no disrespect to you, Andrew, but I don't see spending $26,000 on a truck that if we don't have the amount of emergencies that we do have, and I know that severe weather, when it's bad, it's very bad. Um, I don't know that spending $26,000 on a truck is going to save anybody's life. That's just my opinion. But I'll ask the court which direction you all want to go. I thought we didn't approve it. No, we just proved that he was applying for the grant. The mileage eats us up too. I thought that was our, our big thing. You know, he takes the truck instead of using his own. You know, yeah. also we can use it around the county. You know, pulling voting machines. Displayed at the school, you know. It's awful nice $26,000 display. It is. It is. Well, you're looking at a purchase that's probably going to last 10 years, too. You're not, you know, it's probably deteriorating at the time. Where would, where would we keep it? I guess he'd have to take it home because it responds to emergencies. It would be. He could be taken home, but it's where it would stay at home unless, unless there was right. an emergency or a train. Right. Because there's where we do a lot of mileage because he has yeah. a lot of trains. We're not, we're not to be driving around. So we're going to spend $26,000 for him to drive around to trainings, too. No disrespect, Andrew. And I understand where you're coming. <clears throat> That's just my opinion. But are you <clears throat> Got a personal truck that he's using. I look at that in there. Yeah. He's going to wear his truck out. Yeah. I know we do. Uh -huh. well, I, I thought we approved it as well back in September. I mean, the guy's he's going to wear his truck out, then where are you going to be? And again, if you look at it as a, a 10 year purchase instead of 50 year, it's really not that bad. Right. Something that will last. That's a three thousand a year. And that's what we pay in mileage. Probably pretty close to. You know, but can you clear something up for me? What's the what's the vehicle accessories? Sixty one hundred. Then we go down. There's another sixty seven hundred. What's the old? One point oh two. One point oh four. What's the vehicle accessories? Okay, the first one. Okay, so the one point oh two of the vehicle accessories are the. The camper shell and the cargo tray. So what's the cargo tray? Uh, the 1,500 pound tray. Do we need that? It would be nice. Or do that we need stuff it? could be on it. You pull it out. It's, it's yeah. completely size of the bed. You pull it out. out everything's there. Find a disaster. Oh, okay. Good stuff out. All right. the same time the, what other ones were you looking at? Oh four. That's the emergency lighting and the radio equipment. So that's through Jane in through the state. The bumper accessories, the grill, and I guess big bumper guards, I guess. Mm -hmm. A winch and a grill guard, yeah. I'll make a motion we go ahead and, and purchase this truck since we've got a grant that's going to pay for 50% of it. All right, we have a motion on the table. To go forward with the purchase of this uh, truck, uh, Crystal, do we need to bid this out? 
it's a state price, so I don't think you have so to. So we won't have to. Especially if you're getting a grant, too. I mean, we already applied for the grant, and you're approved for 50-50. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, and everything on there is state contract price. State and, contract. And, this and it's bid, still over 20, so this? the, the mm -hmm. pro state procurement laws, I'm just curious, state. making yeah. sure. <laughs> no. <clears throat> and no taxes, no, that has taxes on it. Okay. All right, we have a motion on the floor by Kenny to go ahead with the purchase. We have a second. I second it. Any more discussion on it? Well, if we do get it, follow the administrative code about how to operate the county vehicle, mm -hmm. keeping it clean, don't use it for personal use to go to outside the county unless you're on emergency or training. And that's the only thing right now. You've got a personal vehicle that you've been using for both, but, but this will be strictly for yeah. county use. Mm -hmm. Okay. Susan, will you call the roll for a vote? Yes. District 1, Chris Leiter. Yes. District 2, Kenny Green. Yes. District 3, J.D. Jones. Yes. District 4, Kirby Melvin. Yes. Judge Executive, Todd Pollock. No. All right, we will move on to thank you. <coughs> we'll talk tomorrow to get this get this started, Andrew. Okay. Uh, on number eight, guys, the claim from the November uh, from our regular meeting from K and G. Uh, Mike was able to talk to somebody today, but we do not have that cleared up yet. This was uh, like a seven thousand dollar bill, uh, and there's some discrepancy about how much time it took him. Well, I know it wasn't brought before fiscal court, before right. this, whatever repair was made, and it should have been. Well, it was a $500, what Mike thought was a $500 job. Okay. And that's that's why we were surprised. At the Welding steel inside the back of the... Yep, the bed. Yep. I think. Uh, and, and what did we get, $7,300 bill? That was the bill, yeah. So Mike, Mike is talking to him and he's <laughs> it out. But initially... Mike said they were going to charge 50 bucks an hour, and he thought it would take about 10 hours uh, to get that done. Well, I'll make a motion we table that to our next meeting. Absolutely. Until we get that cleared up. Second. Motion to second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, guys. Uh, the clarification about the debit card for the road department. Uh, Tom Dobson, uh, Regina, mm -hmm. do you want to talk about that? Yeah. I, I, uh, Todd and I spoke about it last, last week. And we, I thought that when we, when we agreed to get, we, I thought it was a credit card that we agreed to get, and then we had a debit card the, application. The bank, yeah, the, the bank. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. So I didn't feel comfortable signing for the debit card until, we were, <coughs> until we spoke with you all. And then also, Tom Dobson is <coughs> our representative for the Department of Local Government. So I sent him an email, and I'll just read you what he replied back. I just asked him what his what what you know what he thought about debit cards. And he said, in no circumstances are debit cards allowed to be used. Using debit cards bypasses the fiscal court's approval of the expenditure. The funds have already left the account at the point of purchase. Again, no debit cards under any circumstances. So yeah. I don't like they got a daily limit, not a limit. Mm -hmm. right. right. So that, that would worry right. me mm -hmm. And Charlie said the last meeting that somebody here would have to do it, and I don't think it's it's right for anybody on this board to have to use our credit to get a card for us. So my opinion is is let it go. We'll keep doing what we're doing. We'll keep doing what we're doing. Yeah. You need that in a motion? Uh, no, 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 just no. leave it lay. No. Um, all right, then on number 10, guys, uh, there's, I've had a lot of calls of, from people wanting to put a street light out there by Poppies in the library. Uh, that's inside or that's outside the city limits. So I called KU to see what it would cost, and there's no charge to put it up, but we would get a bill for ten to twelve dollars a month for that street light. And I I think we need one out there. I don't think uh, Charlie, could you speak? Has there been any accidents out there? There's been there's been four or five accidents that I know of. Uh, the big thing is the library is a Haven for drug use in the in the evenings. You know they go in there, use the Wi-Fi, and do their drugs right there in parking lots. So is it dark going in off of it? Is it's dark. <coughs> yeah. Actually, behind that new road going back to the cemetery is a even darker. Even darker. Yeah. Well, I mean, I would put it right there. Where's the 
But what is it for safety? Being able to see when you come off the road? Or? Yeah, yeah. Just light it up right there on, to light up Equity Drive. And, to where you, you can, can see it and turn off. Yeah. And Equity is not a, a city street. Oh, it is not. And I don't look back to the new addition on the cemetery, but yeah, is it, it is a new addition on the cemetery? Owned. It's privately owned. It's privately owned. Yeah, yeah it it's going to be. It's a new part of the cemetery. Have you asked the library? Uh, they want it. Poppies wants it too. Want to oh, I didn't ask him for the bill. Want the bill. <laughs> I didn't ask him for the bill. But I thought ten, ten to twelve dollars a month uh, for just to light that up out there. Uh, what are you looking? One hundred and twenty to one hundred forty dollars a year. I bet your library would pay it, but if they don't, I think we probably should. Yeah. If it's a I think issue. we ought to ask them. Yeah. I think so too. I think we ought to ask them. You know, well, there's a lot of places around. Like, I don't know why we're arguing over 140. We just we're spent not, 26. We're not. <laughs> basically said, let them pay for it or we will. That's what I said. <laughs> yeah, that's what I think. Well, I, I'll make a motion and we pay for it. And then we put it in. I'll second. Thank you, Kenny. Where's, where's it going to be mounted at? Right there? On that street pole or on that uh, electric pole out there. I don't know if they would, Kirby, or not. They they probably would if they saw that we were sitting on our thumbs. Well, we weren't sitting on our thumbs. I said, ask them to pay for it. If they don't, we will. That's not sitting on your thumbs. I'd like to get this light up as soon as we can. I really would. You got a second? And I'm in favor? Yeah. I'm, yeah, all those in favor? Uh -huh. Any uh, opposed? Will all right, the next one, the last item here, guys, is this uh, emergency repairs to Ambulance 8388. The amount is $2,941. I asked Will if he could hold off to get this on the agenda, so here it is. Um, Kirby, you've got more maintenance experience probably than any of us. I've got nothing against, I've got nothing against the company that's done. I think keep checks and balances. We ought to get a second opinion. Okay. I think we ought to take it. I mean, you take it to Earl Floyd. We'll take it to a Ford dealer. Take it to get a second opinion on this, and then bring it up to our next regular business meeting. And Will, is this Will McCoy? Is this these things that need to be done? Is this stuff that has to be done by a certified? Uh, Ambulance technician? I guess technically no, but it's highly recommended. Well, you're you're talking about you're talking about if it's that box or something like that on, on an ambulance on an ambulance. No, that's not correct, buddy. It ain't. That's not it's not correct. Forward, it, it's no. forward. No, forward. I mean here, here's here's what boils down to. Okay. Stand up. The, so if 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 my liability, if I work on your truck and your brakes go out on a code three run and you got say you're in the back having a heart attack. Okay, and that truck ends up on a hook. What's the first thing you're going to do? Is this you're going to sue the guy who put the brakes on, correct? Is this your oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm not doubting that. And, and just I'm just clearing it up. So I'm one of two people in the state of Kentucky who's a master ambulance certified tech. One of two. Okay. One of ten thousand heavy truck techs in the United States. Master. Okay. So. That's just telling you what I know about stuff. I've forgotten more about fixing cars and trucks than most people do. I have I have access to all Ford stuff. I have Ford scanners. We have one million dollars worth of liability insurance that covers anything that we do on your truck, whether it be a tire or anything box related. But here's the deal. Here's where I, I, I have an issue. When we get to a point where you all start nickel and diamond over like something that and, and that's a fair bid. I do not overcharge. Paul Oden County, I've been working on theirs for 10 years. They're one of three counties in the state that has the CAS certification due to my maintenance and record keeping on the trucks. I'm not okay. saying it ain't I correct. understand that. And I understand you want to get bids, but here's where I'm at with it, okay? This is how this goes. If you all go somewhere else, I'm fine with that. It's your trucks, it's your money. I don't have a problem with that. But I do not follow behind anybody. I'm not putting my insurance on somebody else. I'm not letting, you know, you're not going to go have Bill Bob over here do an oil change on it. And then when it comes to something he can't handle because he don't know where to get the information to fix the truck, then you all call me. I'm out. So I did, I that's didn't. that's where we're at with that. I haven't said anything about Bill, Bill Bob. I said Ford. Okay, I understand that. Appreciate yeah. that. 
Yeah, and that's I'm the same way with that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, but I'm getting a lot of information that you all are, and, and actually Charlie Brown. I don't know who that guy is, but uh, according to him, the judge told him to call me and find out what he needs to do to get certified so he can work on the trucks, which I think is a really backwards, ignorant thing for anybody to do, because I don't know why anybody in their right mind would tell somebody, this is what you need to do to take money away from me. Well, you know what I'm saying? That, that, yeah, so I don't I know whether that information, but I, my wife would swear to it because she's the one who talked to him, because if well, I, I talked talk to him, him, I'd have told him to go off the bridge. He, uh, so, he explained to me that, uh, yeah. that he used to work on our ambulances. And I said, well, you have to be certified. Maybe he did. And you don't have to be certified. And he said, how do I go about that? I said, I don't have a clue. Right. So as far as him, me telling him to call you, that right. didn't happen. I, buddy, I'm just telling you what the man told my wife. Yeah, well. So however that went, I don't right. know. And it makes no difference to me. But all I know is that he's been hounding uh, uh, poor Will about it also. So, you know, and that is what it is. And, you know, the man may know something about it. I don't know. I don't care. But I can tell you that he probably does not have the insurance that I have to cover the vehicles, whether it be, you know, after my care or in my possession, whether it be something that happened on my building, my lot, whatever, doesn't matter. Have insurance to cover all that. You know what I'm saying? Yep. So I, I appreciate there's a lot of infrastructure that I've put in place to fix ambulances over the past 10 years uh, that you're not going to find nobody else unless you go to Paducah. It's right. the only other guy. So. Appreciate you working on. Yeah. I have a question for Will. How many miles does this have on? And have on? Sixty-eight thousand. Has he not had brakes put on it? Correct? It has had. Yeah, the brakes on those will go anywhere from twenty-five to forty thousand. Mm -hmm. It's kind of where you're going to get at. Because yeah. in in this area, uh, same thing with Odom and Henry. Henry's even worse than Odom. Odom's the best out of my fleets. Uh, we can get about fifty thousand miles out of a set of brakes. But they have nine trucks that they rotate to, and they have better road actually. You know, so out here you're hard braking more, you're going fast more, you're bluing, you're you know heat stressing the rotors, you're getting cracks in them, all that jazz. You'll get more lockups like pins. That's what's happened on this one. The back right side, the guide pins have locked in it and just ate the pad out, which eats the rotor. When you take the rotor off, you got to pull the axle out. When you pull the axle out, you put axle seals in. All that stuff kind of goes together. You got to put axle grease in there. There's all kinds of stuff. You know, got to have all the torque specs for all that stuff. You know, all those wheels got to be hand torqued. You can't just, you know, there's a lot of stuff that, and I'll just, and I'm not going to say anything about a Ford garage, but there's a lot of stuff a Ford garage doesn't do by the book neither because they have way more uh, insurance than I have, and they just honestly don't care. I live in the county, so I do care. I'm vested in it. You know, we pay tax, same as anybody else. Um, and you might get to ride in an ambulance one time. So, Buddy, I had a tree hit me a year and a half ago and broke my bike. So I know all about riding an ambulance. So, yeah. And it, 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 we had this discussion here not too long ago, and the lawyer recommended that we right. you stick with that. Yeah, yeah. And, my, and, and, and I am as fair as you can get on pricing, I promise you. I don't gouge. I don't care to gouge. And I get all the money I can get out of every part on your truck. But if it comes to questionable, we're going with fixing it. Yes, yeah. I'm not. You know. Only thing I'm saying, if somebody in the county asks us, I understand. Have you check with it? Then we can say yeah. I he's totally right, understand. Right on it. But I also, totally understand. But here's how this goes too. So you're taking. Uh, so you got a truck that's got a brake that's aged into the rotor on it. So you're going to drive it from there to Earl Floyd with a wheel that's potentially locked up on the thing. You know what I'm saying? So there's a lot of different situations that you get into with moving that too. Is this being you know, used right now, Will? So, no, it's at his shop right now. It is. So we only got two in commission right now? Correct. Thanks for your time. <laughs> Thank you. I think the only question we would need another uh, estimate on is during an audit. Sure. I know you're really good at maintenance I, and we're a fiscal court. Hold on, hold on. Yeah, and, and we have to look after the money. I don't I think he was arguing with you. He sure. wanted to have another one because we've done got people hit us on, why didn't you get estimates? So, no Tell offense, that. that's the only reason we get it, and we done had said we wanted to go with the I, uh, certified person. I totally last understand meeting. that. Yeah, I, I, and I don't but have a problem with that, it. but okay. it, it, the only thing that, like I said, the only issue that I have is when you got a malfunction like you've had on the truck, you know, then again, when you, when you take it down the road, you're on your insurance at that point. Well, that's a, that's a different statement. If you're saying it's on sure. fiscal divide, then definitely we want to get it fixed yeah. where it's at. Sure. This and I mean, it, it is what it is. And I understand. I do. This was purchased in 16. All the warranties ran out on it? Yes, sir. 
Right. I think we're well, fortunate to have wearing a, tear stuff. I think we're say. fortunate to have somebody certified to yeah. work on these Which ambulances this close yeah. to us. And our last meeting and a resident of the county. And our last meeting I said if we've got a guy in the county can do this and he ought to be able to do it. There right. you go. With, with that I'm, said, I, I'm going to make a motion we go ahead and get the repairs done on this ambulance and get it back in service. We'll right. have to. We'll have to. Yeah. Second. All right. Any more discussion on it? Yeah, but I'm like okay. J. I was like JD. When we have like going to bring up an audit on something like check it, we need to go two different places and have something in writing that that guy said this and that guy said that. This man has put his name down there. Then that way, if somebody asks us, "Have you done anything?" Yes, we have. Okay. All right. Any more discussion on it? We have a motion on the floor to uh, let Emergency Repair Incorporated work on ambulance number 8388. We have a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Thank you. What is, what is your name, buddy? Stand up and introduce yourself. You uh, was that? Yeah, please say your name. Stephen Wyatt. All right, thank you. Stephen. Yeah, and now we would be in the county here if there was infrastructure to have us here. Right. I mean, we're where we what are due to yeah, what, what kind we of have. infrastructure what you need? For? Well, you know, I need a building that, that's like on 42, close to the county line. That's like right there. So I, look, I looked at several of them before I purchased so where I'm at now. It's not sewer. It's not water. It's not internet. It's the building. Well, a little bit all of it, yeah, but, but mainly, yeah, yeah, building. I mean, I got 7,500 square feet where I'm at right now, you know, and it's, we got fortunate to find the location we did. Uh, we've been in that area for, uh, let's see, seven years now. We were rented that building there beside Nationwide for six and a half, and then we've been at our other location there for almost seven months, eight months. Thank you, Mr. Wyatt. Thank you, guys. New winter. We have a motion to adjourn. We have a second. All those in favor? Thank you. Thank you all for coming.